You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. blow, 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 blow. Prepare to be astonished. Everybody and welcome to Headline This. I am Stephen Radford. This is episode six of the regular podcast program. Episode eight, if you want to include live and Halloween special, I don't mind. You know, however you want to number this, um, it's around about episode six or eight. You can find Headline This at hltpod.stephenradford.com. Um, there's there's a bunch of episodes there, and enjoy, please. But in a few minutes, we will be speaking to, you'll be hearing, my conversation with Scotty McClue, a veteran broadcaster in every sense of the word. He is known by many to be a controversial and outspoken radio personality, but that doesn't stop him from chalking up a successful 25-year career in the industry. It's really not easy to come up with an introduction for Scotty. I've actually been... Um, I, I've, I've done this introduction so many times now that my head is literally just exploding. <laughs> I just, uh, I just don't seem to be able to figure him out. Um, it's, it's very difficult, uh, simply because you can't label him. And we talked about this on the podcast. You can't label labeling people is a very tricky thing. And as soon as you start assigning labels to people then they become what you think they are, and it's, uh, it's a very difficult thing. I mean, what are his politics? Nobody really knows. What, what, what are his honest opinions about women? Actually, I can imagine they're very positive, but sometimes the understanding is in the hands of personal experience, which kind of makes labeling redundant, you know? I can only say that he is a force of nature. He is fiercely independent. He's a person from another era, where many like him have come and gone. He continues his path to bring out people from the humbled, the still, and the quiet of their homes. And he gets them to voice their opinions to an international audience. That's right. I'm talking about, this is talk radio. And sometimes talk radio can be incredibly euphoric. And it can open even the most closed off, isolated people. So in a sense what he does is meaningful and with good intentions good intentions at heart that's really all you can say about him but of course once you listen to this uh, episode and if you happen to go and listen to anything that he's um, posted on YouTube you can make your own ideas about what you think he is and his place in this world Scotty brings out extremes in people who call his show that's for sure and his personality is one of layered intelligence that digs deeply into his understanding of the psychological makeup of his audience. There is a certain amount of, of pushing buttons in order to evoke some sort of, a, sort of a, an opinion, um, but I don't know. Um, I, I, to be honest, I think we all do that. We all try and provoke some kind of a reaction from people reaction that we either want or don't want, uh, depending on, on what our intention is. Maybe, to put it simply, he just wants to reach people, to find out what makes them tick. And how better to do that than to bring out the truth, and sometimes even the bitter end of the truth in people's understanding of the world around them. So without any further ramblings from me, I will bring you the conversation that I had with Mr. Scotty McClue. I hope you enjoy it. Telephones now, and we're talking to Luke, who is in North Wales. How are you, Luke? Hello? Hello, Luke? Hello? Yeah, we've done hello. John, you're live in Century 105. Thank you, Scotty. Thank you, Jimmy. First thing, mate, I was a father at 18. Yep. Now, I'm not married. I'm still with the mother of the child. Um, we, we live in an estate where even the Rottweilers walk around in gangs. Yeah. But we, we, we work, we don't claim off the state. And uh, my girlfriend's at university, for example, uh, doing nursing. But the thing is, 
if I agree with you 100%, if we'd have got married first off and brought the child into a stable family environment, it would have been a lot better for my daughter. Uh, I, I do agree with you there, definitely. Can I say something to you, though? By all means, Scotty. All the things you're doing there, I really admire you. Thank you. I admire you 100% because you're a credit to the system. Hiya! You are right, Scotty? Yes, we've done hello now. Where are you broadcasting from? Where are we broadcasting? From the moon, love. Don't be so bloody stupid. Oh, thanks very much. There's no need to. There's no need to be. There's no need to be so downright flaming rude. Oh, Scotty. Now then, look. Oh, I've had a bloody week, I have. Have you had a week of it, lad? Tell you now, I have. Why well, was what were you? Well, first of all, Scotty, what do you think of this? That cute wearing a skirt and robbing someone's house. You wear a skirt. I've been accused of wearing a skirt. And have you been wearing a skirt? I've robbed someone's house. What do you think of that, Scott? Well, have you robbed someone's house? No! And have you worn the skirt? Well, I'm in the house, but I'm not a transvestite. You're not transvest and tights? No. No. So no vest and tights, just the skirt? You're suing me on the grounds of sarcasm? I'm, I'm look, no, I am suing you on the... Grounds of sarcasm against the armed forces. Sarcasm. Also, sarcasm. Right. Hang on a minute, love. Hang on a minute. I can't hold me. I've only got one pair of hands. So you're seeing me in the ground of sarcasm. Well, it's typical. You've only got one pair of hands. You're a man, aren't oh, you? Oh, shut your gob. I thank you. I feel even more humble than usual, if that's possible. But uh, I have to go because there are things to do at McClue's Pies, and uh, they they will not make themselves the old pies, you know. Hello. Hello. Is this Scotty? It is indeed. Yes. Or do I do Who I call? Am I speaking to? Um, I'm Stephen Radford. I'm the host of um, Headline This. Ah, Stephen Radford. Yes, <laughs> yes. A very famous man. No, oh, not. It would be a privilege. Famous. Um, uh, who have you been talking to? <laughs> I I talk to everyone. Oh, that's. This is something of a privilege. Oh well, that's that. That's very nice to hear. And uh, wow. Um, um. Are we making a podcast? Is that what we're up to? Yes, we're making a podcast. This is um. This is a headline. This is a, an interview podcast where I speak to very uh, creative individuals um, um who come from all walks of life, all different manners of 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 media form. And um, yeah, this is the first time I've actually spoken to someone who is a, a, such a, a prominent um, radio figure as yourself. I, I've always wondered. I mean, prominence is an interesting thing. I love that. Scotty McClue uh, has uh, um, become the world's top broadcaster because it's grown um, at a speed that I hadn't, I hadn't recognized. On. I mean, we're in our 25th year, Stephen. 25 years. 25 years. This is the Silver Jubilee of Scotty McClue. That's fantastic. And That's not bad, is And it? you're still going strong, still going and, strong. Well, yes. I mean, I've, we haven't even scratched the surface, Stephen. I don't think so. I haven't even scratched the surface. Yeah. I hold the world record for telephone calls to a radio station, 460,000 calls That's in one lot. week. W really? In one week? Yep. Yeah, one week, and uh, that's all verifiable. Everything is verifiable um, on uh, on a printout, and the telephone company phoned the radio station because it had shorted out the network. Really? And when, and when did that happen? That happened in 1994. That happened within weeks of Scotty McBurr going on a radio station called Scott FM. Scott FM, right. So then that's and One of the senior engineers from the telephone company... Uh, had rung the radio station and said, you know, are you a business? And they said, we're a radio station. He said, do you do something very big at 10 o'clock in the evening like competitions? said, no, Scotty's on. And they said, Scotty McClure, see no more. Tell him it's got £75,000 to uh, strengthen the network to cope with the, with the calls. Wow. And, and so you... you... N nowadays, it's it's all digital, so you you really are cutting out the middleman. You're cutting out the middleman. 
And nowadays, of course, people are saying that newspapers don't have the strength that they did have. Uh, and, and in fact, some some people would say you can tell yourself a lie and cut out the middleman. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> From that point of view. But uh, in, in those days, yes, we had radio, television, and we had newspapers with the big players. Now, That's of course, it. social media has come in, and social media is very much the big player, which is what's affected me to doing a live show on uh, on Facebook Live, which is it's fairly recent. If you're joining us, joining us at 10 o'clock. Join us then. Until then, all I can say to you is dinky do. Oh, by the way, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Spread the word about Scotty McClue just for you right here on Facebook Live, 10 o'clock sharp, Sunday nights. See you then. It's, it's established now. It's pretty much now a, a set form. Um, there's a big difference between what what a podcast is and what radio is. Are you are you turning your back on radio broadcasting and remaining never, in the podcast? No, I will never turn my back on radio broadcasting because mm-hmm. radio is is very very resilient. It's uh-huh. very very um, powerful as a medium uh, because it's got a subliminal element to it in that it can be on in the background while you're doing other things. Very true, yes. It can be right in your face. It can be right there. You can have the sound right up. You can be in your car. You're driving. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's that strength and resilience over the years. And right. I used to work in theatre. I come from a theatre background. Yes. And I worked in theatre. And somebody once said, if you want to feel a theatre in this day and age, put it at the top of a mountain and surround it with barbed wire and tell people they're very privileged to get to that theatre. And you'll be full every night. (laughs) Now, radio started, it was very difficult to hear. Well, yes. My wonderful, wonderful old music teacher that taught some very famous people. Um, as, a, as a young man in the 1920s, he listened to the big bands. He yes. threw a wire out the window. He tickled a cat's whisker, as it was called, on a crystal set with a set of earphones to hear the big bands from America. Now that They were magical. That that that, that that was quite a big time for radio. It was massive because it was the only thing that was there. How difficult it was to receive it, and the magic of actually creating that reception. Yeah, and it must be very awkward for the cat as well. I, I don't know. For the cat, with well, the tickling the cat's whisker, absolutely make the cat laugh. But <laughs> it, you got that, and the other thing is, then you got a clarity of sound when they got the transmission right. They started yes. out the airwaves, and you could buy a receiver, or you could build a receiver, make a receiver. I built my first radio station when I was nine years old. So what you're saying is, is that this internet thing has not, it's nothing new. This has been well, happening no, for internet, years. If you think about it, the internet's actually old technology because it's wired. We are wireless that Marconi, um, you know, discovered mm. with his with his friend, um, it's wireless, so the airwaves are doing all the work. Yes. And when the internet, when everybody started to get wired up, it's like shoving all your information down one big pipe, and that pipe can get choked. That's true, yes. You know, so the internet was actually um, old-fashioned technology, but now, of course, your speeds are getting faster and faster all the time, like flight has evolved, not necessarily because of the design of the aircraft, but because of the power of the engines you could put into them. So your aircraft became faster and faster, and your internet is becoming faster and faster now because you're increasing that uh, power, you're increasing that capacity, and then, of course, you're introducing wireless into Mm. internet. And so we're going back again, we're going back again to... You then have individual uh, input to it. So the airwaves got regulated by the British Broadcasting Company, that, headed up by John right. Reitha Scotsman in 1922, with four employees. You had a general manager, you had a, yeah. a, a programmer, an engineer, and a secretary, and they weren't sure what they were all supposed to do. Now the BBC has got 27,000 people, but... We don't have the Empire Service, you know. No. You don't have that huge 
itself is going out. You don't have the empire. No, no, no. You know, the BBC had to try and regulate this. Unfortunately, thank goodness, um, you know, the the Internet hasn't come under that sort of uh, steep regulation. So you've got a lovely freedom Mm. for individuals to shine. And, and, you know, it it all started... um if you think about it, it, once everything got regulated, there was um, th- there were some bright sparks out there who decided this isn't going to happen. So they got on a boat and Radio Carolina was born. Yep. That was yep. that so was pirates. that was it. The pirates, and this is kind of what what's happening now again. There's um, the, the the well, it, it's a different league of of rebellion because there, it takes a lot of guts to do what they did back then. Nowadays, I don't even call it rebellion. I call it rising. Rising, even better. It's, it's more rising. Yes, yes, yes. In Scotland, we had what was called a rebellion by mm. England in uh, 1715 <laughs> and one in 1745, and there weren't rebellions. There were risings. Risings, say, this uprisings. This king is better than that king. That's it. And I think that's what we're getting in social media now. There's a vine for the the, the social media crown, if you like. Yes. There's a vine to be social media royalty. And I think that the important part of that is is the is the fact that radio still exists there for everybody who's able to tune in. But at the same time, it's been archived on the internet for anybody to listen to afterwards. Yeah. And, and that's that's. You've got to listen. End facility there, so yeah. you're gathering audience all the time. And it's global. And you've still got word of mouth, which is very powerful, mm-hmm. although people are, are, are putting that into their typing. Yeah. Which but is. Typing is laborious, so oh. we need stuff to be voice activated. Yes. You know, and that's, that's probably another step that's coming. And what I'm finding now, it's wonderful to um, have a mobile phone and with a click. You can be in touch with the rest of the world. Yeah. They just need to know about you. Exactly, exactly, and that's uh, and that's what everybody is struggling with—the idea of of identity and be, be becoming something of a global sensation. And and everybody wants it now. They want it to be fast. Yes, but you see, it ends with what you're talking about in making it. I mean, if one yeah, person can hear you, you're broadcasting. That's it. Yeah. You know, if one person could hear you, I mean, if you uh, said, I, I, I don't have a microphone, I've got a larynx, and you said, and we don't have a transmitter, but people have got ears, then you can throw up a window mm. and, and shout out the window. That's it. And people say, I heard you last night, You're by still the way, shouting out the window. <laughs> In fact, I wasn't the only one that heard you. Most of the people around here heard you. It's because I've spoken to 12 of them today, and they all heard you. <laughs> they all heard You've you. got an audience. You, 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 you're talking to a mass audience. That's it. And it's funny, yeah. Um, it, it's it's about what your intention is overall, and I think you, 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 you probably, in a way, it's a lot of people want to have fame or infamy, or they want to have numbers. They want to have so many people on their following list. They want to have so many people listening to them. Um, but it's not really about that. It's about no. the fact that you can get the message out there in the first place. No, because what, what you're doing there, yeah. not you specifically, but what we do do in society, <laughs> for instance, people talk to me and they say, I've never been able to get a handle on you. Yes. What are you? Yeah. Are you a spoof? Are you this? Are you that act? And you say, no, I'm me. I'm Scotty McClue. And that's, um, this is exactly what I was hoping to 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 hear from you because um you have been a um people look at you and they think well you must be a provocateur and uh, this is some sort of an act um but then nobody seems to be able to pinpoint what your politics are they're not able to figure out where you come from where you lean to but is it all there in what you say or is it in in the is, is it basically what people are perceiving are they projecting a, a personality onto you well why are you absolutely i mean why are they looking for a label in the first place exactly that's true. so quite often you've got uh, major employers saying um i don't know that we should take scott of a because we don't know his politics and you say <laughs> well that's a good thing that's a plus I don't know that we should take Scotty McClure because we don't know this. We mm. don't know that. 
we don't know the next thing. And you think, but these are all pluses. These mm. are the very reasons you should be interested in hiring Scotty McClue. I mean, it's, it's no yeah. secret that one of the big media moguls was approached by his chief executive, who was into programming, who said, I've only got one question for you. Can we afford to hire Scotty McClue? And the media mogul fixed him and said, can we afford not to hire Scotty <laughs> McClue? It's always a play on words. It's always... It's a play on words. It's, uh... And that's the whole... You've actually touched it there. The whole thing <laughs> is a play on, on words. words. So if somebody says, who are you? What are you? you yeah. say, well, what do you want me to be? Who do you want me to be? And I will give you who I am, and you can work out if that suits you or if it doesn't. It's really clever because, the, 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 for example, one of the things that um, that is, is talked about in your repertoire is, is that you have an opinion about women drivers. And uh, I, have, I have an opinion about everything. Exactly, but and that, but that, that's exactly true. Everybody has an opinion about everything. But it, it, it was, is it to the point where you say that uh, that women are bad drivers, or is that no, only no, implied? Of that. This, it's, it's nothing to do with me calling women. There's no misogyny in this. No, the fact is that women are slightly differently programmed. And if you watch women parking, if you go to a supermarket on a Saturday morning mm. and watch women parking, uh, you know, Chelsea tractors, four-wheel drive vehicles for going up the center aisle of the, of the supermarket, um, you, you know, you're in for some serious comedy. They'll go back and forward and back and forward, and they have complete uh, clarity for parking, but they don't park. So there's a coordination thing there. Interesting, because well, I, I I can't speak for uh, for women myself or for, but uh, I know that my wife, for example, she is she's extremely talented at um, at reverse parking. Reverse parking yes. is good. She uses her mirrors. She uses those yes. mirrors. They're I mean, there to use. This is a generalisation. We're not yeah. talking. We're not specifically saying you know because one gender. I'm just saying. Oh you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. As yes. a generalisation. Yes. I have to have a generalization when you're talking in general terms. In general terms. Okay, you're right. Yeah, if, if there is you one, if, if, if experience has taught you that uh, specifically. And, but, but it's true. And how often in... have you heard somebody say something like, you say, um, oh, James has not come back yet. He said he would only be 10 minutes. And Who was that? Almost an hour. And people say, well, this is typical man. Typical man. Yeah, yeah, you typical know? man. Well, there isn't typical man. Yeah. And there isn't stereotypical man any more than there is a stereotypical woman or anything else. But Scotty McClure is purely based on observation. Observation, yeah. And if that's the truth, if that's what you've experienced and that's what you have in your in your mind and your and your experience, then then it's truth, isn't it? And then it's okay. And, then and that's fine. Say, I have a problem with his truth. And you say, well, if you have a problem, then that's your problem. That's not my problem. But come oh. and take it to me yeah. and we will discuss it. And there's probably been, yeah, and it's, it's, it's a strange situation where people play on the idea that uh, they, they're just simply just projecting an idea of what they think you are. Um, yes. Without actually considering that, well, maybe that's just your experience. It's well, like somebody uh, once said, yeah. "Is he taking a rise out of the audience, or are they taking a rise out of him?" Ooh. And my answer to that was, "It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As long as somebody's having fun, yeah. who's taking a rise out of who?" Now I, I watched. It um, speaking of that, because you're you're known a lot for being on the radio, but you have touched television a few times. Well, you used to be a um, an announcer and a presenter. Television newscaster. That's and it. A continuous you've... announcer for ITV. That's it. Um, but you've also been a guest on uh, was it Nikki Campbell's show? I believe. Yeah, Nikki Campbell's show on national television. Uh, yeah, along with the wonderful distinguished guest Barbara Dixon, Daniel Dixon. O'Donnell. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, and uh, Rona Cameron, the comedian. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we, you know, we had a fabulous time, but it's very interesting 
when you go on television, I mean, this is why I would quite like to go on the likes of the Graham Norton show or with Jonathan Ross. Well, they would love you. They would you love know, it. Well, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, just a chance to say to people, this is what I do. You yes. seem to find it touches positive nerves all the time. I've never actually touched a negative nerve, I don't think, in people, although it makes people angry mm. because it, it flags up. I mean, yeah. what is it because somebody happens to be pontificating that somebody then says, I'm going to let my green-eyed monster come out here. Yeah, yeah. You know, it doesn't matter whether you like Scotty or whether you hate Scotty, as long as you love him. (laughs) Hi there, it's only me. I'm just interrupting the show for a second because I need to let you know about a must-have podcast. I'm I'm really talking. I'm just going to get this off my chest. Oh my god, speaking of chests, that's exactly what I'm talking about here. It's Radio Tatas, hosted by two amazing gals from Texas, Natalie and Lala. They're hilarious, they're absolutely goofy, and it's incredible. You just gotta listen to them. It's, they're on Libsyn. Is it Libsyn or is it Absinthe? I'm not sure what they're on, but they're on something and it's incredible, and you've gotta go listen to them. It's Radio Tatas Libsyn.com. It's a great podcast. And you'll be laughing your butt off so much that you'll have to keep on replacing the screws that attaches your butt to your back, okay? I don't actually have a butt. I have legs that go straight up to my back. There's no butt. Radio Tatas! Why do men go to prostitutes, Scotty? Well, I don't know that I'm actually the best person to ask that. I mean, the first thing is I couldn't do what the prostitutes do. You know, for, for a variety of reasons, but uh, I couldn't stand out in the cold all that time, you know, I couldn't cope with that. I think, I think the real reason that uh, men go to prostitutes is I blame their wives, I blame the women, because if they... <laughs> seriously, no, 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 no. Huh? And people used to come on and say, people used to come on and say, this is a brilliant show if they had a proper presenter. <laughs> Wow, and they would say that. You know, isn't that is that not provoking themselves? Is that not what they're saying to you? I, think, I don't think it's anything to do with me at all. I think no, it's to do with to them. Do with this person is refusing to fit into their perception of yes. what television and radio and broadcasting yeah. and communication is all about. And so this complex, um, complex idea of what they think you are, based on certain, certain things that you that that are necessarily said, but not necessarily meant in the in, in the context from which they derive it from, is purely their own making. It's purely all their own making. So mm. the show is actually all about the audience. Yes. Yeah, it is. A, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean there. Because when you watch the show that, it's all about yeah. the audience, yes. if you like. So it's it's mass interviewing. So instead of sitting at home mm-hmm. watching a star, yes, 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 the star is sitting watching the audience. The audience. Oh, that's uh... and a talk show is more about listening. Sorry, what was that? So for instance, a lady came on mm-hmm. to the telephone one night, and I said, how are you, Mary? She said, oh, I'm fine. I said, I don't think you are. <laughs> and she said, no, no, I, I, I am. I said, no, I don't think you are. I don't think you're telling me the truth, because I was listening, because I have two ears and one mouth, although I do a lot of talking. And mm-hmm. I said, I don't think you are. And I said, tell me what's wrong. She said, no, it's private. So I then knew there was something wrong, and it was so important what was wrong, she didn't feel she wanted to discuss it. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, of course, that's, that's your prerogative. You don't have to discuss it. And she said, no, well, it, it's, it's because it's, I said, is it, is it medical? Yes. Mm. That's why I don't want to discuss it. I said, mm-hmm. well, you don't have to. I said, is it ladies' problem? <laughs> well... No, not really, kind of. Mm. 
And I said, can I ask you one question, Mary, before we leave this? She went, well, what is it? I said, do you have Crohn's disease? And there was a pause, and she said, how on earth did you come out with that? It's taken doctors seven years to diagnose that, and you've done it on the radio in 30 seconds. Wow. Now, that sort of thing can just happen. And I said, am I right? She went, yes, you are. Wow. And then I explained what do you to say the to that? a little bit about what Crohn's disease was about, and then we went on with our discussion. And she was over the moon. Oh. Then that... another night, a gentleman phoned me, and he said, Scotty, I've just lost my father. And I said, I'm so sorry to hear this. Mm-hmm. I said, I mean, was this, is it recent? Was it? He said, no, half an hour ago. Half an hour ago. Half an hour ago. Okay. And the first thing he'd done after seeing his father had died and obviously attended to the ambulance and the doctors and that was for him, Scotty McClue. He just needed to have a moment. Wow. He needed to have a moment with somebody he felt he could trust or somebody he felt he could speak yeah. to. Wow. That's powerful. That's powerful stuff. You know, so it's very much, I mean, I don't even like to label anyone else. I don't like to use the word um, ordinary people, because no. what's an ordinary person? That's, that's that's something that I've been reckoning with for myself, and I think, um, let's say, for the last 10, 15 years, I've always, well, well, ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to try and be something. We've all kind of got this aspiration to be something, and it's always... It's always something that you can write in a list on pieces of paper and you think, well, I want to be this, that, that, and that. And then you get to a stage where in your life you just look back at all that and you think, does it matter anymore? And then you start to think, well, who else out there is thinking like me? And you eventually just find the right people who actually understand you and you're able to tell them to their face, this is what I am, this is what I do, Um, I'm nothing but myself. Whether you think that's special or not. Because in actual fact, we are somebody anyway. We're already somebody, and it's nothing... At one end of the spectrum with a green green of sand on Mm. on an ocean beach. Exactly. And at the other end of the spectrum, we are us. Yes. And I quite often say to people, enjoy being you, because it's a wonderful thing to be. Yeah, it's a very unique thing to be, and there's yes. there's no reason to try and be any more than 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 that, because yes. that's what people would relate to, and I think that's probably maybe that's why why you are able to relate to people in that way, because you are not trying to show yourself off as um as anything above your you know you you're not trying to tick off a list and say I want to be this person this type of person you're just being Scotty. I'm just being Scotty, and mm-hmm. the thing is that uh, the secret of my success is I'm more interested in people than in money. That's a yeah. That's a... Yeah, because somebody who's only interested in money, people who actually vocalise money is their god. Um, mm. They're going to be very, very disappointed. Yes. And I know people joke and say, "Well, you can't take it with you." And you say, yes, but also, you know, why would you give up your very valuable life just to have money? I always think of that moment. Have you ever seen the film Oliver? Yes, yes. Have you so ever recently. seen at the end, Fagan has taken the best jewellery that, the, that the, the young people got him over the years, and he's put them in a box, and that's his nest egg. And that's when it. the crisis hits, and the, 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 the law are coming for Fagan. He tries to make his escape. He tries to make good his escape. And he takes his box of jewels with him. And as he sinks into the mud of the banks of the Thames, his jewelry is sinking with him. And he goes, my money, my money. You know That's it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think That's of true. Fagan and I think this person will end up like Fagan, you know, just sinking into the mud. Of the sands of time. That's it, and you just—that—that's all you are. It's just a, a burden that you're you're carrying instead of actually yes. being free. Yes, absolutely. That freedom, and I think that the freedom to express yourself is what the Scotty McLean yes. program is all about. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, 
So yeah, I think we've come to to a lot of uh, understanding here, and I think it's 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 impressive when you realize because I've never actually ever thought of you as somebody who uh, went out of their way to to provoke or anything like that because there's something about it that is genuinely. Um, the word innocent isn't it it's more and it's not ignorant either it's more you're learning about um a world out there as well and and you're reacting to it as it's coming to you for the first well, I'm time in a massive learning curve exactly. i always have been yeah and, and and i don't think you can put uh uh you know age an earthly age on it when no. it's a massive learning curve and I personally do not feel I have scratched the surface. Yet. No, and that's why you say that, that you barely scratched the surface on Scott uh, on, on on being um, this this personality that's that's just uh, on the air every night for the last twenty five years. You haven't stopped. You haven't wavered. You've you've maintained it um, because you've kept true to it, and that's uh, and that's what's. Uh, what what's to be commended in that way? Because it, it's it's an incredible thing that you've managed to to do is to is to actually maintain it and not let it be, get you know. Well, that's because I don't know what words I'm looking for. it all the time. Yeah, and it makes me laugh. It yeah. really makes me laugh when people think, "Oh, he's been about for some time now." So is that not old hat? And you oh, think, what's that? Old hat. You see, he hasn't. You know, it, you know, people say, "Oh yes, um, we've heard his act." No, they haven't. No. And the other, the other, the other misnomer, which is great fun, is when people say, "I've heard your audience." You say, "No, you've heard my contributors." Right. So you haven't heard my audience because the audience. I mean. Uh, mm. it, without putting too fine a point on it, and I'm only saying this because it's a statistic, is I took an audience from 3,000 people per half hour on uh, a, a, a 2.2 million TSA radio station to almost quarter of a million per half hour. Now, even that now is dwarfed in what we can do communication-wise. Exactly. So if you added together the platforms, so you might have, say, a digital audio broadcast, a DAB platform mm -hmm. of 3 million, and you might say, well, at the moment, you've got like a 45% um, take-up in DAB listening. So you're going to look at 45% of that. Now, then if you said, if it's 10% of that audience, so that's you got 4.5% of your possible TSA, and you still have a huge amount that can be sold to sponsors and advertisers if they're interested in, in your product. That's again true, yeah. You know, yeah. and um, I can remember when I was working for ITV and mm. um, the snooker. We used to have a snooker program from the Guildhall and Preston, of course. And I remember the uh, the the uh, master controller who uh, for ITV, one of the big companies, usually down in London, mm -hmm. would say, uh, you know, can we? Because everything in ITV ran to the second, and yeah. they'd say, it, you know, we're coming in at uh, twenty three thirty five uh, fourteen. So you would be coming in at. You know, I was 25 to midnight. And he said, can you announce, sir, top and tail it? It's taking the scenic route. In other words, the lines were being fed round mm. that route. Because okay. it was all through, through, uh, through lines, through post office lines. And uh, out to your transmitters. So, that night, my microphone was open to the whole of the UK. Wow. Now... It doesn't mean anything, because all I was saying was, you know, now we're heading for the Guild Hall and Preston for the Snooker. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought that microphone is open to a whole country. And that's only a tiny country, a dot on, on, on the planet. It is, yes. It's so a you fraction. know you've made it when you have an audience approaching 7 billion. Mm -hmm. That's, wow, yeah. 
that's a, that's a scary that's a scary number to achieve, and I think that um, I, I don't think it's a. You made it. You know, you made a start. Yeah, yeah, that's that's because once you've got an audience of seven billion, you then have to inform, educate, and entertain them. Yes. And, and good luck with that reaching everybody on that, that level. I see. Yeah. Good luck to me with that. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was quite funny what you said about uh, you know when people say we know what your we know your audience we've heard your audience yeah. and you have such an, uh, a big number in your audience but only so many of those people call in and yes. and, and that doesn't necessarily represent an, an audience the, the callers who 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 call in. They either have a, an issue with you or they want to tell you how much they love you or they want to compliment, yes, you know, exactly. which, which is two extremes of an emotion. I mean, like you say, everybody can you can have um, radio in your workplace. You can have it passive in the background. You can have it while you're driving. And those those are your audience members, the ones who are, are taking you into their lives there each and every day and 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 including you in that life. Whereas the callers, as you call them, contributors are the ones who are, are actually um, creating the narrative for you. They're creating the uh, the, the story that is yes. about Scotty McClue, and that's what everybody is talking about. Yes, that's what everybody's talking about. That's and that's the puzzle. Watching. And that's the and puzzle. And going on Facebook Live, this was a friend of mine that said, try Facebook Live, and I said, what do I do? Meaning, do, do I buy another PC or a tablet? Or No, you just click the icon. Yeah, and that's where Facebook, uh, you know, have have uh, they've actually touched on genius. Mark Zuckerberg's um, Facebook has touched on genius with you mm. just click the icon. Yeah, and now you can talk because that's a new feature in Facebook. It isn't, um, you know, it hasn't been around for that long. No, it's, it's, it's fascinating, and yet over one hundred thousand people already have seen my Facebook videos. That's incredible, Facebook already. Facebook Live. And they all laughed at Christopher Columbus when he said the world was round. They all laughed when Edison discovered sound. And, you know, always when I've done something, people have laughed at me. <laughs> uh, I used to joke that that's why I gave up comedy, because people just laughed at me. Um, <laughs> and people laugh at you, but then they suddenly think, hang on a minute, I'm with this guy because he talks my language and it's yeah and whether you're saying previate or dosvidania or whether you're saying jambo or whether you're saying hello or bonjour or guten morgen yeah or nosda or yakida it doesn't matter no. you're speaking an international language that's it and there's nothing for people to fear. You have all the paranoia of mm. various false barriers. For instance, people say, they of this race, they of that race. There is only one race, the human race. And Listen. we're all members. Yeah, and it's... And it's, it's welcomes not only the human race, but any outsiders and stragglers who happen to be there. <laughs> Religion. Oh, religion causes a terrific problem. It causes wars. Religion has never, ever, ever caused a single problem in the world. What causes the problem, it's if people. there is a problem, is a lack of knowledge and understanding. That's and it. that's why we need more mass communication. And it's, it's the communication that is... is, is Dri the driving force of humanity. It's not about Absolutely. it's not about the labels that we keep on assigning ourselves, and that's very true. That's I think that's that's fun fundamentally what's what's missing. It's, and and, it's, and yeah. you know, I, I can remember the controller of uh, um, Radio One turning up yeah. at a meeting at uh, uh, you know at, at a big radio conference, and I thought, what's the controller of Radio One coming to hear Scotty McClure speaking for and there for because. We have a massive, massive appeal to young people, a mm -hmm. massive youth audience. Yeah, that's it. And you see, the thing is, there's nothing to fear with Scotty McClure. He has no agenda. He has no great message apart from the fact we are us. That's it, yeah. Well, thank you very much for uh, for being a part of this podcast. I, I think we've... Uh, I, 
I, I think we could go on for another five hours, Ooh, really. Bradford, thank you for having me on. It's, it's been, been a privilege to be on your platform. And um, yeah, and and best of luck with your with your GoFunding. And um, we we need to get some. Um, de- uh, basically, before we go, we need to know where we can find this, uh, where we can find you. So, what's the address yep. for the GoFundMe? The GoFundMe is you go on to www.gofundme.com forward slash Scotty S C O T T I E hyphen M C C L U E. So it's uh, gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. McClue. And you can hear me broadcast live in vision on Facebook Live on Scotty McClue's page on Sunday evenings at 2200 hours Greenwich Mean Time. And if you're, and if this hasn't caught your attention, uh, caught the attention of of listening to him live, and contributing to his Facebook show, I don't think what will, because it, it's, uh, I think it's quite a fascinating uh, thing that you've got going there, and um, and again, look at this, you're you've got the GoFundMe page, you've got the Twitter account, you've got the Facebook account, you're We've you're got the you're, website. you're everywhere, and the website as well, yes, and the Over website. Ten million people have visited www.scotty-mcclue.com. Scotty McClue, you're a very unique individual. and we're, spe- we're speaking up for other people. Speaking up for other people and also letting other people have a voice. And you've already said it. You know, people are drawn to you simply because you are yourself and you, you, don't, you don't hold back. And if you, you know, and if it's drama that you want as well, then uh, you can also find that elsewhere, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> You can find that anywhere, but with Scotty, you know it's going to be real, it's going to be authentic, and it's going to be what's on everybody's minds to begin with. Well, it's quite funny because I, I think once said to me, you're not even funny, and I said, I never, ever said I was. No, no, but uh, <laughs> if, if that's if that's a bar that people need to use, and, and, and humour is, is subjective, I mean... You know, if, if someone doesn't find something funny, then that, that that's something to do with them, not to do with you. Some of the funniest people are the ones that don't know how to laugh at themselves. Oh yeah, that's true. And uh, you know, we we all have those moments, and then we have to realize, okay, well, what what are we really doing here? Um, you know, we, we're here to just be human beings and just to have a good time. Well, I was uh, told somebody said I would like to introduce you to somebody who's very very senior in the world. And uh, I said, yeah, what, what, what do I need to know about this person? They said, well, he doesn't suffer fools gladly. And I said, do you think you might make an exception in my case? <laughs> it works. It works. And it's, it's a play on words, and, it's, and, and you do it so well. Stephen Radford, take great care. I love what you do. Someday I will phone you and surprise you. Oh, now that that would be that would be an exciting thing to have happen. Um, just and just th- not do, not at three a.m. in the morning now. Okay, it has no, to be a reasonable time. <laughs> no, but what we'll do then we'll uh, you know we'll, uh, we'll we'll do a podcast on you. You see, oh, <gasps> that'll be exciting. Oh, there you are. that would be lovely. Well, I say to you, take care of yourself. Same to you. Um, lots and lots of love to the world and to your listeners and from Scotty McCoo. To you, Stephen Radford. Dinky do. Dinky do. Thank you very much, Scotty. Dinky do. Ta ta. Thank you very much. And there we have it. That was Scotty McClue. And you can find Scotty at his website address, Scotty, that's Scotty, I E, hyphen McClue, that's M C C L U E, dot com. So, muck and clue. And uh, you can find him also on Twitter at Scotty McClue, as well as GoFundMe. Don't forget that GoFundMe. It's very important. He really, really wants you to uh, to support him in his endeavors. GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty dash McClue. And uh, everything is there that you need to know about Scotty. And uh, you can also find him on Facebook. Just type in his name. You'll You'll get him. But that's all from me. I'm gonna have to go now. I've got baby chores to do. Aspen, do you do you want to say goodbye to everybody? 
Say bye. Bye.